looked for his watch to find out what time it was. The pocket watch in his pocket was gone. Wakati alikuwa anaendelea na kazi, basi akaingia kwenye mfuko wake ndio kwamba chukue saa hiyo na angalie ni saa ngapi, lakini kuingiza mkono kwenye mfuko akapata saa haiko ndani ya mfuko. He really wanted to find it because it was a legacy inherited from his father. Na alitaka sana aipate, imeenda wapi? Aipata itafuta ipate kwa sababu hiyo saa ilikuwa ni ya maana sana kwake na babake alijulikana kwa saa hiyo kwa sababu ilikuwa ni saa ya maalum sana. However, he was a certain that he had lost it inside the factory, but the factory wasn't so noisy with the machines running and there were so many objects that it was complicated and messy so he couldn't find where the clock was hata hivyo alikuwa na hakika ya kwamba hiyo saa imepotea ndani ya kampuni si kwingine nje lakini ndani ya kampuni kelele ni mingi mashini zinakimbia shughuli ziko hapa na pale yani ni hali ya kuchanganyikiwa yani ni kelele mchanganyiko wa vitu hapa na pale kwa hivyo juu ya hali kama hiyo hangeweza kupata saa yake iko wapi So this person stopped the machines in a factory for a moment. Basi alichofanya huyu mtu ni kusimamisha mashini zote kwenye kampuni kwa muda kidogo. He also made the workers stop work for a while and rest. Na akafanya wafanyikazi wote kwa kuwadanganya wapumzike lakini yeye anasimamisha kazi. He also told the employees doing office work to be quiet and not to talk at all. Na kisha kenda kwenye ofisi akaambia wafanyikazi wote wanyamaze kimya wasiseme hata chochote hata kukohoa. After doing this the factory became very quiet. Na baada ya kufanya hivyo vyote kampuni nzima ikawa imenyamaza kimya kabisa. It was so quiet that even if a needle was dropped the sound could be heard. Kulikuwa kumenyamaza kimya sana kiasi ya kwamba hata mtu angeangusha sindano sauti ya kuanguka kwa sindano ingesikika As he listened attentively he could hear a tick 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 sound coming from underneath some of the messy materials Sasa wakati alifanya hivyo vyote mazingira ni kimya kabisa akao nasikiliza kwa uangalifu sana na kisha akasikia sauti ya saa tick tik tik ikilia imejificha ndani ya uh, bidhaa fulani ambazo zilikuwa zimechanganyika pale it was a very faint sound but because the surroundings were very quiet he was able to hear even the smallest sound and in the end he was able to find his lost the pocket watch in this way na hata kama ilikuwa ni sauti ndogo sana sauti finyo sana ya saa ikilia lakini kwa sababu mazingira yote ilikuwa imenyamaza ni kimya hata kama ilikuwa ni sauti ndogo hatimaye aliweza kupata saa yake ya mfuko kwa njia hiyo The Holy Spirit continued to speak and the guardian angel continued to speak but the reason we cannot hear or feel their voice is because Our minds are too complicated and busy. Linganisha sasa na sisi sasa. Roho Mtakatifu anaendelea kuongea. Malaika wako mwelekezi anaendelea kuongea. Lakini hawezi kusikia, hawezi hisi sauti zao kwa sababu akili yako kama vile kampuni ile factory imechanganyika shughuli ni mingi sana. You have a lot of distracting thoughts, worldly worries and the fleshly thoughts so you can hear the worldly stories and the voices of the flesh but because of the things your heart is noisy and loud such that you cannot hear the small voices of God nor the other voices of angels and so you can't feel it nor understand it ndani yako kuna mawazo mengi ambayo yanakusumbua uko na wasiwasi wa vitu vya dunia uko na mawazo ya kidunia mawazo ya kimwili na unasikia hadithi mingi za kidunia unasikia sauti mingi za kimwili 
Kwa sababu ya vitu kama hivi moyo wako umejaa kelele mingi sana, sauti mingi ziko juu sana kiasi ya kwamba sauti ndogo ya Mungu na sauti ndogo ya malaika hauwezi kusikia, hauwezi kuhisi na hauwezi kuelewa. Therefore in order to make our ears blessed enough to hear and understand the voice of the spirit we must cleanse our impure and messy hearts. Na basi kama vile tu kwenye factory basi vile vile ndio kwamba tuweze kufanya masikio yetu yawe ni masikio yaliyobarikiwa ambayo inaweza kusikia na kuelewa sauti ya roho basi metulazimu kwanza tusafishe mioyo yetu iliyo chafu iliyo changanyika na mambo mengi yasiyohitajika First John chapter 3 verse 3 says all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure Ndio maana waraka wa kwanza wa Yohana sura ya tatu mstari wa tatu inasema kila mmoja mwenye matumaini haya ndani yake hujitakasa kama vile yeye Yesu alivyo mtakatifu If there is a lot of ear wax and foreign substances in your ears you cannot hear sounds well na kama pengine kuna machafu fulani ama vitu ambavyo ni vya kigeni viko katika masikio yako basi hautaweza kusikia sauti vizuri my mother is turning 95 years old mamangu mwaka huu atafika miaka tisini na mitano kwa umri Thanks to God's care and the Lord's grace she is well sleeps well and is healthy. Na nashukuru kwa ajili Mungu mwenyewe amemlinda na neema ya Bwana inatosha anakula vizuri analala vizuri na ako na afya. However the last time I went to Seoul Korea for the funeral of our late senior pastor I went to see my mother hata hivyo wakati uliopita wakati nilienda Korea Kusini Seoul kwa ajili ya mazishi ya mchungaji wetu nilienda kumuona mamangu baada ya pale Although she was in good health generally I had a lot of trouble talking to her because her hearing had become very dark and she couldn't hear loud sounds very well hata hivyo hata kama alikuwa na afya mzuri kijumla alikuwa na afya lakini nilikuwa na shida kuzungumza na yeye kwa sababu hangiza kunisikia vizuri juu kusikia kwake kulikuwa ni giza hangisikia vizuri juu kulikuwa na sauti mingi kelele mingi ndani yake uh, so i connected her with a hearing aid company employee to give her hearing aids and i returned to kenya at the time na basi nikatafuta mtu mmoja kwenye kampuni moja ambayo inasaidia watu wasiosikia wasikie nikaleta huyo mtu hapo ndio kwamba amsaidie aweze kupata kusikia na katika shughuli hiyo kabla ishe nikarudi kenya wakati huo however i recently received a call that said that although my mother had difficulty hearing due to her age The bigger reason why she had a difficult hearing was because there was a lot of earwax accumulated in her ears. Hata hivyo baada ya kurudi Kenya, majuzi tu nikapokea simu ikiniambia kwamba mamako hawezi kusikia vizuri sababu kubwa ni kwa ajili ya umri, lakini sababu nyingine kubwa zaidi ni kwamba Hawezi kusikia kwa sababu ndani ya masikio yake kuna uchafu ama nta ndani ya masikio. So they removed the earwax and although she couldn't hear very well she was able to understand people's voices to some extent. Na kwa hivyo wakaondoa uchafu ndani ya masikio na hata kama hawezi sikia vizuri vile kama binadamu wa kawaida lakini angalau kwa sasa anaweza elewa sauti za watu kwa kiwango fulani. If there is a lot of foreign substances such as earwax in the ear of the heart which are supposed to hear the voice of the spirit it is difficult to hear the voice of the spirit. 
Na sasa vile vile tu kuhusiana na sikio la kusikia sauti ya roho kama sikio lako la kusikia sauti ya roho itakuwa na uchafu mwingi vitu ambavyo havifai kuwa katika sikio hilo basi itakuwa vigumu sana kwako kusikia sauti ya roho itakuwa vigumu sana kuielewa pia What is this ear wax like foreign substance that accumulates in ear over your heart. Na nikaongea kuhusu uchafu ama nta ya uchafu ambao utaingia kwenye masikio yako, masikio ya moyo, masikio ya roho, ni uchafu aina gani? In the heart that follows the world, worries and anxieties, worries about money, the sin of not living according to the word, or selfish heart, anger, etc become foreign substances that pollute the heart and prevent the ears of the heart from hearing the voice of the spirit moyo ambao ni moyo wa kufuata vitu vya dunia ni moyo ambao umebeba wasiwasi na mahangaiko kwa na wasiwasi kwa sababu ya pesa ama kutenda dhambi ya kutoishi kulingana na neno la Mungu ama moyo wa tuseme kuwa mtu mchoyo moyo wa hasira vitu kama vile vinafanyika uchafu ambayo inachafua mioyo yetu na kuzuia masikio ya mioyo yetu isije ikasikia sauti ya roho among all people in the human history who had the most foreign substances such as earwax in the ears spiritually na tukaongea kuhusu uchafu katika masikio ya kiroho katika historia ya binadamu wote huku duniani ni nani alikuwa na machafu mengi zaidi ya wote katika sikio lake la kiroho what do you think who he is Una, unawazia ni nani I think that he is Judas Iscariot. Na wazia ni Judas Iscariot. The day before Jesus died on the cross, they gathered in the upper room to celebrate the Passover and ate the last supper of a meal. Siku moja kabla ya Yesu kufa msalabani basi wanafunzi wote pamoja na Yesu walikusanyika katika chumba cha juu ndio kwamba washerekee pasaka na wale mlo wao wa mwisho Jesus was anxious because he had to celebrate the Passover and be crucified the next day but what worried him more than this was the soul of Judas Iscariot kesho yake Yesu alikuwa sulubishwe na afe msalabani kwa hivyo jioni hiyo wakienda kushiriki kwenye pasaka meza ya mwisho Yesu alijazwa na pengine wasiwasi kwa sababu ya kila ambacho kitampata kesho yake lakini wasiwasi wake mwingi ilikuwa inahusu nafsi ya Yuda Iscariot Jesus who knew in advance the Judas Iscariot would betray him and fall into the lake of sulfur in eternal hell took pity on his soul and tried to give him a chance to repent even at the last moment Yesu alikuwa na wasiwasi kwa sababu alishajua mbele alishaona mbele nini kitatendeka kwa Yuda Iscariot ambaye atamsaliti na kisha ingie kwenye mtu wa Kiberiti kule Jehanamu na akae pale milele ndio maana akawa na wasiwasi akawa na woga akihurumia nafsi ya Yuda Iscariot na ndio maana akajaribu kwa njia yoyote ile aweze kumsaidia atubu hata katika nafasi ya mwisho So in chapter 26 of the Gospel of Matthew While eating the press of a meal, Jesus says, "One of you will betray me." Ndio maana kwenye sura ya 26 ya injili ya Mathayo, wakati walikuwa mezani wakishiriki pasaka, ndipo Yesu akawaambia, "Mmoja wenu atanisaliti mimi." The disciples were surprised and asked, "Lord, is it I?" But Jesus said, "The one who has dripped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me." 
na basi aliposema hivyo ya kwamba mmoja wenu atanisaliti mimi wanafunzi wote wakashangaa wakaanza kumuuliza kila mmoja akimwambia je ni mimi bwana je ni mimi bwana lakini Yesu akawajibu na kuambia yule aliyechovya mkono wake katika bakuli pamoja nami ndiye atakaye nisaliti at this point it seems like we have almost got the answer to who will betray Jesus but Judas carried shamelessly pretend it's not him and as the Jesus directly ikafika Yesu amesema hivyo kiwaziwazi basi ilionekana waziwazi ya kwamba uh, nani huyu atamsaliti Yesu ya kwamba ni Judas Iscariot lakini Judas Iscariot mwenyewe alijifanya hata bila aibu alijifanya kana kwamba si yeye na yeye pia akamuuliza Yesu moja kwa moja Judas said surely you don't mean me rabbi ndipo Yuda akamuuliza Yesu je kweli kweli ni mimi rabbi then Jesus said you have said so and Jesus gave him the clear answer Yesu akampa jibu hata safi zaidi kwa kumwambia naam wewe mwenyewe umesema nevertheless Judas carried a pretend and continued to eat with him until the end hata hivyo bado Judas Iscariot alijifanya akajifanya akaendelea kujifanya na akaendelea kukula tu na Yesu mpaka mwisho However the same scene of eating the passover meal is also recorded in John chapter 13 where it is more clearly revealed that Judas Iscariot will betray Jesus. Hata hivyo tukio hili la kukula pasaka meza ya mwisho limenakiliwa pia kwenye kitabu cha Yohana sura ya 13 na pale kwenye sura ya 13 ya Yohana imeonyesha wazi wazi ya kwamba ni Judas Iscariot ndiye atakaye msaliti Yesu. John chapter 13 verse 26 says Jesus answered It is one who, who to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Yohana 13:26 inasema Yesu akajibu ni yule nitakaye mpa hiki kipande cha mkate baada ya kukichovya kwenye bakuli. He gave it to Judas Iscariot saying to one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have it Did it in the dish is the one who will betray me na kisema vile alikuwa anampa Judas Iscariot kikombe hicho ndio maana akasema ni yule nitakaye mpa hiki kipande cha mkate baada ya kukichovya kwenye bakuli ndiye atakaye nisaliti so it is clearly Judas Iscariot who will peter jesus ilionekana wazi wazi ya kwamba ni yude iscariot ndiye atakaye msaliti yesu when things get to this point judas carrier thinks oh the whole thing has been exposed jesus knows it all and although he may not be able to truly repent he says even if it's just a form formality I was wrong please forgive me shouldn't I kneel down and confess I am a bad person Na wakati mambo yalifika hapo kiasi ya kwamba kila kitu kimefunuliwa kiko wazi haikosi Judas Iscariot aliwazia ah imefika hivi imefunuliwa yote Yesu anajua kila kitu hivi na hata kama hangeza kutubu ile ya kweli lakini haikosi kuna sauti ambayo ingemwambia na pengine angesema hata kama ni kusema tu juu ya kusema haikosi pengine akijiambia naona nimefanya makosa afadhali nisamehewe na pengine nipige magoti ama niseme mimi ni mtu mbaya nitubu However Judas Iscariot did not repent until the end and they ended up becoming a traitor who sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Haikusi kulikuwa na sauti kama hizo na yeye pengine kujiongelesha hivyo lakini hata hivyo Judas Iscariot hakutubu mpaka mwisho na mwisho wake ni kwamba alimsaliti Yesu kwa kumuuza kwa vipande 30 vya fedha. He was tormented by guilt and ended up committing suicide by hanging himself. 
Hatimaye jambo hilo lilimsumbua sana dhamira yake ikamsumbua sana moyoni na mwishowe akajitia kitanzi kwa kujininginiza juu ya mti. Why did Judas Iscariot ignore Jesus word even though Jesus gave him several opportunities to repent? Nauliza ni kwa nini Judas Iscariot alipuuza maneno ya Yesu? Hata kama Yesu alimpa fursa mingi mingi sana za kutubu. Judas Iscariot's ears of the heart then listened to the voice of the spirit were filled with the foreign substances of a sin such as earwax, greed for money, resentment, the desire to betray others for one's own benefit, and the feelings of alienation and inferiority due to not being recognized by the other disciples, so he couldn't hear the voice of Jesus. Yuda Iscariot hakuweza kusikia sauti ya Yesu kwa sababu masikio yake ya moyo ambayo ilifaa isikie sauti ya roho ilikuwa imejazwa na uchafu mwingi vitu vya kigeni kama vile nta uchafu kwenye masikio na uchafu huo ilikuwa ni kama alikuwa na tamaa ya pesa alikuwa na chuki ndani yake na alikuwa na hamu na nia ya kusaliti mwenzake ndio kwamba apate faida zake na mbali na hiyo pia kwa sababu kulikuwa na wanafunzi wengine ambao walikuwa nafanya kazi pamoja na Yesu na walitambuli ika yeye alikuwa naisi kana kwamba amepuuzwa hatambuliki kama wanafunzi wengine sasa juu ya uchafu kama huu ndani ya moyo ndio kamfanya asisikie sauti ya Yesu That's why in order to cleanse the ears of his heart he had to repent and circumcise his ears to remove foreign circumstances uh, substances in the ears of his heart na basi katika hali kama hiyo ndio kwamba yuda iscariot atubu ili muhitaji kwanza asafishe masikio ya moyo wake ndio kwamba aweze kutubu na afanye tohara kusafisha masikio yake na kuondoa uchafu wote ulioko kwenye masikio ya mwili masikio ya roho in jeremiah chapter 4 verse 4 God says circumcise your hearts there is a cut of the skin of your heart Kwenye Yeremia sura ya nne mstari wa nne Mungu anatuambia tahirini mioyo yenu kumaanisha ondoa ngozi ya juu ya moyo wako As Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 10 says you cannot hear because your ears are uncircumcised Na kama vile Yeremia sita mstari wa kumi inavyosema ni kwamba hatuwezi kusikia kwa sababu masikio yetu haijatahirishwa haijasafishwa It says to whom can I speak and give a warning who will listen to me their ears are closed so they cannot hear the word of the Lord is offensive to him they find no pleasure in it. Yeremia 6 10 hiyo inasema niseme na nani na kumpa onyo ni nani atakaye nisikiliza mimi masikio yao yameziba kwa hiyo hawawezi kusikia neno la Bwana ni chukizo kwao hawalifurahi. You need to circumcise your ears by cutting off foreign circumstances and a hard skin in your ears so that you can hear the voice of the spirit clearly ndio kwamba ufike kusikia sauti ya roho kwa usafi vizuri imekulazimu kwanza utahirishe masikio yako kwa kuondoa machafu yote na ngozi ngumu iliyoko kwenye sikio lako la kiroho the following is a story I heard from a pastor in Korea. Ifuatayo ni hadithi moja nilisikia kwenye kutoka kwa mchungaji moja kule Korea. He said that a female believer who had immigrated to a foreign country called her in the middle of the night. Mchungaji alisema ya kwamba mshirika wake ambaye ni mwanamke pia alihama kaenda taifa lingine la nje na sasa alimpigia simu usiku wa manane uh, it is said that uh, woman believers problem was like this na inasemekana wakati yule muumini alipiga simu alielezea shida yake hivi pastor am 
I trying to break up with my husband. Mchungaji najaribu kuachana na mume wangu tufanye talaka. I prayed a lot for my husband during the time. Muda huo wote nimejaribu kuombea mume wangu sana. I have a problem with a lot. Nimevumilia mambo mengi sana. I try to endure somehow but my husband gets worse. Na jaribu kuvumilia zaidi lakini ndivyo mume wangu anazidi kuwa mbaya zaidi. He drinks more, drinks less, listens less and even resort to violence. Badala yake analewa zaidi, hanisikilizi na hata anaamua sasa ni vita ndani ya nyumba kila wakati. I can't take it any longer. Siwezi vumilia zaidi ya hapo. However, if I believe that God is with me, I try to endure more. Hata hivyo wakati mwingine huwa naamini ya kwamba Mungu ako pamoja na mimi inanitia motisha kuvumilia hata zaidi. But I don't believe it and finally I tried calling you pastor and when I got no answer I was now thinking of ending it all. Wakati mwingine naamini Mungu wako pamoja na mimi ndio nanipe nguvu ya kuvumilia na kuvumilia lakini pale imefika sasa siwezi vumilia zaidi siwezi amini zaidi ndio maana nikajaribu nikupigie simu na wakati nilikupigia mara ya kwanza haukupokea simu yangu ndio maana niliwazia nikate tamaa na nimalizie pale So it is said that a pastor responded the same God is with you He believes but you believers just don't believe it. Pale ndipi nasemekana mchungaji alimjibu huyu muumini akamwambia Mungu ako pamoja na nyinyi ambao ni waumini wake lakini ni vile nyinyi waumini hamuwezi amini kwamba Mungu ako pamoja nanyi. Then she asked what does that mean? Ndipo huyo muumini akamuliza mchungaji unamaanisha nini ukisema hivyo? God the Holy Spirit says to believer I am with you. But a believer is not listening. Ni vile Mungu Roho Mtakatifu alishamwambia huyu muumini ya kwamba niko pamoja na wewe lakini ni vile yeye na yeye hakusikiliza hakuamini. She asked, "Pastor, are you saying I can't hear the voice of God? Why can't I hear?" Ndio maana atakazidi kuuliza mchungaji, "Mchungaji, unasema ya kwamba siwezi nasisikii sauti ya Mungu. Kwa nini siwezi kusikia?" Then the pastor replied even if God speaks if the ears that hear the voice of the spirit are clogged with the foreign substances we cannot hear Ndipo mchungaji akamjibu akamwambia hata kama Mungu atanena lakini kwa sababu masikio ambayo inafaa isikie sauti ya roho imezibwa na uchafu basi hatuwezi kusikia A heart that hates your husband a proud heart that thinks you are better than your husband a heart that blames god a heart that wants to give up on life and these are foreign substances that block the ears that hear the voice of the spirit na kaendelea kumwambia huyu muumini ya kwamba moyo wako kama huo moyo wa kumchukia mume wako moyo wa kiburi wa kuwazia kwambo kwa afadhali kuliko mume wako moyo wa kulaumu Mungu moyo wa kutaka kuchoka na maisha yote hii ndio uchafu ambao unaziba masikio yako isisikie sauti ya roho God is saying I am with you but you couldn't hear him so God had to call me from abroad and night in order to make you know Mungu alishakuambia niko pamoja nawe lakini wewe haukusikia hiyo ndio maana Mungu akafanya kwa namna fulani unipigie simu ndio kwamba kupitia hiyo simu ufike kujua ya kwamba ako pamoja nawe Who gave you the heart to want to know if God is with you or not Na kisha kamuliza huyo muumini ni nani alikupa ule moyo wa kutaka kujua kama kweli Mungu ako pamoja na wewe ama hayuko pamoja na wewe It is God who gave you that heart. Na kamwambia ni Mungu ndiye alikupa moyo kama huo. Did you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you? Na kamuliza je, unaamini kwamba Yesu alikufa msalabani kwa ajili yako wewe? 
She replied, Yes, I believe it. The pastor continued saying, The person who made you believe that is got the Holy Spirit within your heart. Do you pray while calling God Father? Mtungaji akaendelea kumwambia yule ambaye alikuwezesha uamini hiyo ni Mungu Roho Mtakatifu aliye ndani yako na sasa je unaomba ukimuita Mungu Baba She replied Yes I am doing that Akamwambia naam nafanya hivyo The pastor said It is the Holy Spirit within you who allow you to call God our Father Akisha mtungaji akamwambia ni Roho Mtakatifu ndani yako ndio anakukubali wewe umuite Mungu Aba Baba As the pastor said this the believer started crying and said I understand pastor God the Holy Spirit is with me I have gained more strength now I can overcome it Na wakati mchungaji alisema hivyo muumini akaanza kulia na akasema sasa mchungaji naelewa Roho Mtakatifu kwa pamoja nami amenitia nguvu zaidi na sasa nitashinda Why this believer was having a conversation with the pastor she removed the substances that were blocking her ears from hearing the voice of the spirit one by one and was able to hear the voice of the spirit clearly Na sasa ile mazungumzo kati ya muumini na mchungaji ni kama kusema hatua ya yule muumini kuondoa machafu kutoka kwenye sikio lake la kusikia sauti ya roho alikuwa katika mazungumzo alikuwa anaondoa moja baada nyingine hatimaye akaweza kusikia sauti ya roho kwa usafi In the same way I hope that we too can have a blessed ears that can hear and understand the voice of the spirit and become believers who receive answers and are blessed. Na basi vile vile natumaya kwamba kila mmoja wetu tutapata masikio yenye baraka, masikio yaliyobarikiwa ambayo yatasikia na yaelewe sauti ya roho na kwa kufanya vile tufanyike waumini ambao tutapokea majibu na tutakuwa wabarikiwa. Okay. Uh, secondly The eyes that can see and understand the things of the spirit are blessed eyes and you must use these eyes well to receive blessings and victory. Ya kwanza nimeongea kuhusu masikio. Ya pili sasa ni macho. Macho ambayo yanaweza kuona, si kusikia sasa, kuona na kuelewa vitu vya roho ndio macho yaliyobarikiwa na lazima utumie macho haya vizuri ndio kwamba upoke baraka na upate ushindi. The reason we have two eyes in our face is because we need two eyes to uh, accurately measure the distance to the object we are looking at. Sababu ya sisi kuwa na macho mawili kwenye uso wetu ni kwa sababu tunahitaji macho mawili ndio kwamba uweze kuona umbali kisahihi umbali kati yako na kile kitu ambacho nakitazama. To see the object we see in three dimensions to be able to distinguish whether it is far away or close and the church how big or small it is ndio kwamba uweze wakati unaona kitu fulani ndio kwamba uweze kutambua vizuri kiko mbali ama kiko karibu ama ndio kwamba utambue ni kitu kikubwa ama kitu kidogo inabidi utumie macho mawili na utazame kitu kile kwa mitazamo mitatu from a scientific perspective we can say like this but the eyes are spoken of in this bible our eyes in a spiritual sense sasa hiyo ndio sababu ya kuwa na macho mawili kwa binadamu kwa mtazamo wa sayansi wanasema vile lakini macho ambayo yanaongelelewa kwenye biblia ni macho kwa mtazamo na kwa mawazo ya kiroho Jesus described the Pharisees and Jews as blind who only see the physical world and cannot see the things of a spirit Yesu wakati alikuwa anaelezea kuhusu mafarisayo na wayahudi aliwataja kama watu vipofu kwa sababu walikuwa naweza tu kuona vitu ama ulimwengu wa kidunia wa kimwili bila kuona vitu vya kiroho In Matthew chapter 15 verse 14 Jesus said leave them alone they are blind guides if the blind lead the blind 
Whose will for interpret? Ndio maana Yesu akasema kwenye Mathayo 15 mstari wa 14 waacheni wao ni viongozi vipofu wanaoongoza vipofu kama kipofu akimwongoza wa kipofu mwenzake wote wawili watatumbukia shimoni Although the Pharisees had true eyes and could the physical world well they were blind and could not see the spiritual world at all Hata kama hawa mafarisayo walikuwa na macho mawili lakini wangeza kuona tu vitu vya dunia vizuri lakini upande mwingine walikuwa vipofu kwa sababu hawangeza kuona ulimwengu wa kiroho hata kidogo God made us two eyes on our face one eye must be on eyed since the physical world and the other eye must be an eye that can see the spiritual world. Mungu ametuumbia macho mawili kwenye uso wetu lakini kimafumbo ushikanishe hivi ya kwamba macho haya mawili kimafumbo jicho moja ni jicho la kuona vitu vya dunia vitu vya kimwili lakini jicho lingine ni jicho la kutazama na kuona vitu vya kiroho. However many people live with one only one eye. Hata hivyo ukweli ni kwamba watu wengi wanaishi tu kwa jicho moja peke yake. Our face has two eyes, but if you live with both eyes only looking at the physical world, it is the same as living with only one eye. Nasema hivyo kwa sababu hata kama uso wetu uko na macho mawili, lakini Ukaishi kwa macho hayo mawili yote yakitazama tu dunia hii ulimwengu huu basi haina tofauti na mtu ambaye anaishi kwa jicho moja peke yake Rather than only looking at external phenomena we must be able to see the fundamental truth hidden in the phenomena there is the will of God Na manisha, badala ya kutazama tu hali iliyoko ya kimwili kwa sasa basi na bidi zaidi ya hiyo tutazame ukweli uliopo uliojificha katika hali hiyo yani tutambue mapenzi ya Mungu hapa ni gani Joseph in Genesis had spiritual eyes that could see not only the visual phenomena but also the true will of God contained within them Yusufu kwenye kitabu cha mwanzo alikuwa na macho ya kiroho ambayo iliona zaidi ya kuona tu hali iliyoko kwa sasa aliza kuona mapenzi ya kweli ya Mungu iliyoko ndani ya hali hiyo Even when he was sold as a slave to the Egyptians by his own brothers and suffered hardships he looked at the hand of God behind him Hata kama aliuzwa kama mtumwa kule Misri na ndugu zake wenyewe na akapitia magumu mengi akateseka sana lakini katika hali hiyo yeye bado alitazamia tu mkono wa Mungu ambao ulikuwa juu yake Later when his father Jacob who had lived with him in Egypt died his brothers fearing that Joseph who had become prime minister would seek revenge came and begged him to forgive them for their previous sin of selling Joseph into slavery. Baadaye, baadaye wakati babake Yakobo aliweza kufa, wakati walikuwa naishi kule Misri, ndugu zake Yusufu akawa naogopa huyo Yusufu ya kwamba kwa sababu sasa amekuwa waziri mkuu, pengine Yusufu atataka kulipisha kisa, kisasi na pengine wangetaka wamuombe, wamsihi awasame dambi yao ya kwanza jinsi walimuuza yeye Yusufu akafika kwenye utumwa Then Joseph replied It was not you my brothers who sent me to Egypt as a slave but it was God Na pale ndipo Yusufu akawajibu si nyinyi ndugu zangu ambao mlinituma hapa Misri nikawa mtumwa bali ni Mungu mwenyewe God sent me to Israel first before you to save our people and all the people of the world from drought. So don't worry. 
Rest assured, I will raise your children. Na kendelea kuambia ni Mungu ndiye alinituma hapa Misri, akanituma nikuje hapa wa kwanza hata kabla mufike ndio kwamba mimi ni okoyo watu wetu wote jamii yetu pamoja na watu wa taifa hili lote duniani kote kutokana na janga na ukama ambao umetendeka. Kwa hivyo musiwe na wasiwasi, muwe na hakika ya kwamba nitawasaidia mutalea watoto wenu vizuri. If only look at what is happening to us now it may seem like something we should have taken revenge on because it is painful and difficult but if we think of it as something that happened from God everything will be forgiven understood reconciled misunderstanding will be resolved and there will be no need to be stressed Mambo ambayo yanatendeka katika maisha yetu ama karibu na sisi katika mazingira popote pale tukaitazama tu hivi hivi tu tudaweza ona ni kama vitu vya kuchukia ama vitu vya kulipiza kisasi kwa sababu ni vitu vya uchungu vitu vigumu hatuwezi vumilia lakini tukaiwazia kwa mtazamo wa Mungu kana kwamba ni Mungu amesababisha ama ameacha itendeke kwa makusudi yake mema basi katika mambo yote tutasameheana tutaelewana tutakubaliana na ile kutoelewana itaondoka na hatimaye hatutakuwa na haja ya fedha mastesi yoyote katika maisha yetu I will end today the sermon here. Samani, nitaachia ujumbe pale leo. Hallelujah, almighty Father God of love. Please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now. Show your works to transcend space and time on those who are receiving this prayer around the world. Give them faith and drive away negative thoughts and doubts and drive away all tests and trials. From head to toe, all entrails, joints, nerves, tissues and cells, whatever the sick part may be, burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and with the original light. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses and infirmities, go away. May the light come. Drive away all endemic diseases such as malaria. All contagious diseases such as cold, flu and fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents and fix their broken bones. Restore them from burns and let the heat and burning sensation go away and let there be no skull left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning and substance abuse. Give them the blessing of conception. May you receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ I command, the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air and evil forces of darkness, go away. And their servants also go away. Father God, give them strength to cry out in prayer and to cast off sin and to become sanctified. As their soul prosper, let all things go well with them, let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the firewall of the Holy Spirit, with the heavenly hosts and angels and with your blazing eyes, protect all your children, their family, workplace and business. Give students wisdom and understanding and give them fervent passion to study hard. Please keep their hearts and minds from the worldly things and let them love Father God all the more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink or whatever they may do, let them do it all for the glory of Father God. Let them say, I met God, I experienced God, I received answers and blessings. Let them testify with their lips like this. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen.